So what I'm saying is from the start, Mohammed got it wrong, you know, so, so let, let's conclude. Even if he was a nice guy and he didn't do all those horrendous things that he did, yeah. he still does not qualify for a profit. And this is why we thank you, Christian right. Prince, yes, uh, for exposing the yeah. Dawah falsehood yes. or the confusion. A Basa Dawah team member will provide the evidence that the Quran has contradictions. Because how come in one verse in the Quran, uh, it says you cannot marry non-Muslims. And then he make another verse in the Quran saying, well, you can marry a Muslim. Okay, that is a contradiction. You know that. So we thank you, Abbas. Yeah, What's more? Yeah. Well done. Thank you, the Dawa team. Today's show is about false witness, about lies. And we talked about the commandments in the last. So we're going to stick with one commandment, lie. Exodus 20, chapter, Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This is the eighth commandment and today's topic. Today we expose the big lie. We expose those spreading this lie. We're going to say Allah is a liar, which we've already shown. Right. Muhammad, the false prophet, is a liar. Right. Shaitan Jibril is a liar. The Islamic Dawah teams are liars as well. You're not fooling us with your rhetoric. We're not fooled at all. And we are going to expose you as our brethren, um, um, what they call it, the Jehovah Witness yes. Dawa yes. representative. I'm not going to call your name. You know you with your five uh, Bibles, yes. the Jehovah Witness Bibles in a yeah. doctor's handbag. That's right. Um, we like to thank Abbas. Uh, we have to thank yes. Abbas oh, for, really? for, for making our work easier. Yeah. He did a good job yeah. calling Chris Reed. So, God, blessings to you. The Lord will enlighten you. Now, in the last video, we talked about, um, um, we talked about, Dishonesty, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And now Takia is live and kicking down here in Speaker's Corner. And we've come to the conclusion, haven't we? We've come to the conclusion that no matter what you show a Muslim, you know, no matter what you show them, you know, they're not going to back it down. You know? Because the starting point is they have to come to the conclusion that the Quran has got it all sorted. They have to come to the conclusion that the Quran has no contradictions. So even when you show them one, this is the thingy. You know, Takia is live here. Yeah, it's mean? live. It's live here, you know. CP's made it quite clear, you know, he's gone into the Arabic, he's exposed us, the DCCI team have done. One of the things Muslims have been doing for ages is saying, show us these different Qurans. They've been saying this for ages confidently, show us these different Qurans. And what they meant is bring them down. Now DCCI brought down 23, they brought them down. The video is up online, where Hatton is pulling out Bible after Quran. After I do Quran. not like interrupting yeah. you. Yeah, sure, no, that's but, fine, um, that's fine, go ahead. Our brother Ray is from DCCI, yes. right. and yes. you yes. can confirm yes. that yes. you guys yes. brought... Absolutely, yes. we, we, had, uh, we had Jay come down. Down. Yes. Jay Smith come down, he uh, provided all the Bibles with the evidence. These yes. were Arabic Bibles, they weren't translation, they were actually Arabic Bibles, yes. clearly demonstrating there are differences. Yes. And then they went into detail in terms of what those differences are, in terms of the manuscripts, in terms of clear different words that have very different meanings, yes, and right. therefore there's a very different interpretation. What they tried to do is make a deception in to, to suggest it's purely a recital. And what that really is trying to suggest is that they're saying in a different culture, in a different part of the world, the same thing. If a word has a very different meaning, it therefore means the sentence has a different meaning, it's therefore not a recital, right. it's a clear different definition. That's right. And that's what we're trying to really that's show. Right. And thank you. Yes. And this is that's why right. we needed thank the experts. No, Please no, continue you your much. introduction. Yeah, so that's right. So my point is making evidence is being provided. Now we did a we, we had talked previously about um, at Medida, who's one of their great you know um, debaters, scholars, call him what you will. He made it quite clear, speaking on the behalf of all Muslims, that they're not interested in evidence. He said that in his book called Crucifixion and Crucifixion. Crucifixion to mean the crucifixion of Christ and crucifixion as in fiction, as in something not true, not true. In that book he made it quite clear that he said that we Muslims, speaking for the behalf of the Muslims, and this is where they get themselves on a sticky point again. I suppose at this point, if it came to it, they wouldn't throw him under the bus. Because he's speaking without their permission on all of their behalf. He said we Muslims you know, do not seek evidence for, um, or proof for Surah 4157, where it says that Jesus didn't die. And, and at the same time, in the same breath, he called on Christians to provide evidence for themselves. Yes. And, and what I'm saying is, this is this is what you see here in the park. They're not interested in evidence. Hypocrisy yes. and yes. contradiction. Yes. They're not interested in proof. So I'm saying, no matter what you bring them, so we've got to deal with the dishonesty here. You know I mean? No matter what you bring them, they're not going to back down. It's been done. So one of the big challenges, show us the Quran. One of the lies that they told them for ages, that the Quran is just one book. Now we've seen the variants, we've seen the different Quran, as you said, yeah, in different languages. It's not a matter of just variants either. Nor is it not, not, not just a matter of the English. So 
go and learn Arabic. It's a problem with the Arabic. The problem yeah, with the a, Arabic. Not the English. It's not the English. With the Arabic. Problem with so the, the Arabic. argument of showing um, you, you don't understand the English doesn't hold. And one more point on that as well, and this is what really sort of gets to me actually, because if Muslims are saying that I need to go away and learn Arabic, then I want to turn the tables and say like because remember when they come to you, they're, they're dealing with the Bible in English translation. Yes. Yeah. And they give no consideration to the Hebrew. No. When they're dealing, or when the they're Greek, trying to find or the Latin. They give no consideration to the Latin or the Aramaic or the Greek, none at all. They come with the English Bible and they say, show me in English, we're in English, remember, a book that's in the original language, where Jesus said, I'm God. You know what I mean? Worship me. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And when you try to say to them, well, you know, when it gets to that point, because, because I understand that God is multilingual and he yeah. can speak all languages. Oh, yes. But when it gets to a certain point where you have to say, you have to understand that, you know, this was in Hebrew, they'll have none of it. So one perfect, one per perfect point is here. The way in which they express that I need to show them that Jesus said I am um, God is almost like they're ignoring the Hebrew. So yeah. yes, and what we can to, one sorry, thing to, yeah, oh, sure. One go great on, thing to on. add to that is that when you think about yeah. if a if a if a book is coming from God, like yeah. their book is uh, claimed to be coming from God, then surely God will not have a, an issue or limitation to language. Not at all. Just as much as where we look at the Bible, we have no problem in translating in any language and still getting the meaning. Surely, God of any truth of any book that he is providing will have no issue about translation so for them to use that there's an issue in translation that you can only understand the bible in, Ara in arabic uh, again in ancient it, arabic in yeah. ancient arabic yeah. that really puts a limitation on god very much so very much so and that's the problem there is with Allah. well when your god is a, uh, <laughs> yes. a black stone inside yes, a building right. well you, yeah. you, you yes can he translate yes. anything? But let me wrap it up with this because I want to say if we're going to play that game, we have to be honest. Yes. So if, if, if I'm going to go to, if I, if I can't go to a Muslim with the Quran and, and say, you know, and, and they, without being attacked with, you have to understand Arabic or the Arabic meant this and Arabic meant that, then, you know, the tables must be turned. We should not, I'm saying Christians, this is my suggestion, allow Muslims to come to us with the English Bible and say, Jesus didn't say I am God or Jesus said, um, I can only do what the Father said. We should say, no, you know, what does he say in the Hebrew? We should turn the tables on them. There you you go. need to come to me with some Hebrew knowledge yes. and stop being arrogant and tricky and stop practicing takia. Come to me with some Hebrew, come to me with some Arabic, come to me with some Greek and then we can talk. Well, one of the things I would say to you yeah. is that they wouldn't even understand how to comprehend the English. No, that's because right. um, yeah. I, I saw, um, he's called Yaya17, um, he's stopped going online trolling. Right. Christian channels, okay. but he calls Gentiles genitals. So oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, there that you is go. the Islamic right. yeah, uh, yeah. Dawah team yeah. for you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is another little tactic they use is where they take a scripture and they try to base a doctrine on that scripture. This has been explained to them many, many times. You cannot pull a verse to a, 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 a produce a, a doctrine. You have to produce many verses that has to be in harmony. Scripture right. proves upon scripture. And you have to picture. read through the whole of the uh, dialogue, the narrative, the many associated scriptures to get the harmonized view in order to get a doctrine out of the Bible. This is, this is very different to the way the Quran works. It doesn't have a single verse that provides a doctrine. We have to put all the verses yes. that relate to that particular yes. area yes. and get us. Or you go to a tafsir. Yes. But yes. in regards, yes. he, he um, Brother Hudson already had a good um, keyword for this. He says, read in the Bible like a dictionary. Yes. Yeah. And read that is just yeah. Yeah. Read the Bible like a dictionary. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to finish on that point. We should turn the table there because they're not being fair. You have to be fair. Come yeah. to me with some knowledge of the language that you're reading in English. Come to me with some knowledge of the original language behind that English. Or or get yes. a basic understanding yes. of English yes. and the <laughs> use of the dictionary right. so yes. that we can yes. have a, a dialogue. Yes. We mentioned that Allah is Satan, he breaks the Ten Commandments. Yes. So I'll first of all go into a reading. Yes. Like a lot of Muslims get upset when we call Allah Satan and they say you evil Christians yes. and they can't even spell Christian right. Yes. Yes. And they got, which does um, somehow defeat me. Mm. But I'm not going to waste my time for no. you Muslims. That's I'm right. going to show you your own. I'm not going to use the Bible. Our Bible clearly tells us Allah is Satan. Mm. This is it. This is what the Hadith says. And it has a Quranic verse in the Hadith. Mm. So you cannot say that this is separate. No, it's the Quran is in the Hadith. Yes. So Muslims, hear this again. I'll say it third time. So it registers in your brain. Yes. The Quran is in the Hadith. Gabriel did not come to the Prophet for some time. And so one of the Quraysh women said, his Satan has deserted him. So came the divine revelation in the Quran. And if you can read the divine revelation. By the forenoon and by the night, when it is still, your Lord, O Muhammad, has neither forsaken you nor hated you. And that's Quran Surah 
93 verse 1 to 3. So he said his Satan had deserted him. Right. And then Allah comes up with a revelation by the forenoon and night when it is still your Lord. So Allah, your Lord, Satan, Satan. has said he has not forsaken your prophet Muhammad. So when I say that Allah is Satan, do not argue with me or threaten me with violence or say sexually derogatory things about my mother. Go and that's right. choose your hadith argue and with the Quran. argue with your Quran because it's that's where I got the information from. So now you're saying, I know some of you smart Alec Muslims and this is why I caught out this second hadith for you Muslims that think you're smarter than me but you don't know your own scripture. Guess what? Jibril is not the Lord. Uh, the, um, Allah was saying something else. But then I'll say when Muhammad first got his revelation. I was again called and I looked about but saw nothing. I was called again and raised my head. And there on a throne in the open atmosphere. If you look at the Arabic, it says in the sky yeah. or in heaven. Yeah. That is Jibril, peace be upon him, which is ridiculous. Was sitting. I began to tremble on account of fear. I came to Khadija and said, wrap me up. They wrapped me up and threw water over me. Very now, how is Jibril on the throne of Allah? Can you explain that? Yeah. Only God should be on the quality. throne. Thank mm. you. So we're going to go behind that. Um, so the conclusion to all that, Allah the false a pagan rock god breaks all the commandments. Right. Even a demon Jibril sits on Allah's throne. Our Bible tells us clearly it's a Satan's activity. Do you want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 to 15? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Amen. Woe well unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Now, when you call a rapist, a thief that did banditry, a liar, a murderer that beheaded 800 people, a child molester that slept with a six year old, a nine year old girl, and a pagan that kissed a, an idol, a black stone idol, a prophet of God, then you are full of wickedness and falsehood. And you are showing that the prophet Isaiah, the prophet of the Lord has warned us about such evil. So you shouldn't be angry with us, you should be following the words of the prophet. Now we'll go into the second part, which was the Dawa team line. Yes, yes. I'm not going to mention names, yes. but um, the contact is called bearing false witness. Yes. Now we've seen the Dawa team say that Allah doesn't pray to anyone. Mm. Well, I'm not going to mention the name. He said he prays to, not for, and yes. twisted words. Yes. Another one saying that Ibn Kathir was an Israelite when the Israelites stopped existing 2,000 years before Ibn Kathir. Mm. He knows himself. He saw the lion of the park, yeah. which runs. I've never known a lion that runs. Anyone that's hunted <laughs> a lion, like myself, knows that you never turn your back to a lion because yeah. it will chase you. Lions love to chase. So, those are misgivings. And also, when you say that, um, where is Jerusalem in the Quran, that tafsirs are not useful, Jerusalem's not in the Quran. These are all falsehoods, which is called bearing false witness. Yeah. But Abbas, and we really, let's all clap yeah, for no, Abbas. Thank you, Abbas. Thank you, Abbas. Thank you very much for showing the contradiction <laughs> in the Quran on the Christian Prince channel. And this is why we thank you, Christian right. Prince, yes, uh, for exposing the dawah falsehoods yes. or the confusions. Abbas, a Dawah team member, will provide the evidence that the Quran has contradictions. And this is one of the funny things about Muhammad, proving that he is uh, not a prophet. Because how come in one verse in the Quran, uh, it says you cannot marry non-Muslim, and he forbid them from marrying non-Muslims, and then he make another verse in the Quran saying, well, you can marry a Muslim. Okay, that is a contradiction, you know that, but show okay, me that thank you. Then. Okay, guys, did you hear uh, this gentleman say this is a contradiction? All yes, right. I'm saying it. All right, thank you. Then do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from any that other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. <laughs> hey, there you go. But Abbas has proved there's contradictions yes, on yes. the CP show yes, live. Yes. So we thank you, Abbas, yes. once more. Anyway, well done, one. thank you, the Dawa team. Go on. Just one. Go on. A contradiction, yes. a contradiction. Oh, no. Well, there, there are over a thousand yes. contradictions yes, in the Quran. Right. Yes. Uh, for example, who was the first Muslim? One part says uh, Moses, another part says um, Muhammad, right. and another part says um, Abraham. Yeah. So yes, right. there's another one. Oh yeah, you can't reconcile. And we can go 
Pharaoh's death is another one of the contradictions I'll bring up. One part it says Pharaoh's killed, one part it says Pharaoh says Allah Akbar and becomes a Muslim. Yeah. So did he die in the flood or did he not? The Quran doesn't even know. So we won't go into any more. Yeah. And they, the unbelievers, planned to deceive and Allah planned to deceive the unbelievers and Allah is the best of deceivers. Wow, there you go. So Allah... Are they then safe from Allah's deception? Oh, I don't feel wow. safe. I'm scared. No one feels safe from Allah's deception except those that shall perish. Wow. wow. And remember, when the unbelievers plotted deception against you, O Muhammad, to imprison you or kill you or expel you, they plotted deception, but Allah also plotted deception wow, and Allah great. is again the best of deceivers. Oh, the best wow. of all deceivers. Well, this is what John chapter 8 verse 44 right. says. Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, which I can say jihad, yeah. and abode not in the truth, deception of Allah. And there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So the true God of the Bible does not lie, and the God of Islam does. In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time? God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? The answer is no changes mind when the Quran abrogates verses yes. that shows that it's not of our God if you can read right. the re concluding yeah. verses of that he who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind for go. he is not a human being that he should change his mind Amen. once for all I have sworn by my holiness and I will not lie to David so we know that the yes, God of clear, our Bible, lie, uh, the one God, lie. the triune God, yes. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit yes. will never lie or deceive See, us, yes. the faithful, no matter what denomination, if we've accepted Christ as our Saviour, we know that our salvation is God because we know the truth yes. of our Lord yes. in all holiness and we can fully trust Him. Amen. 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 I would like you to read Quran 4. 157 because this is what we'll focus on yeah and for their saying indeed we have killed the messiah jesus the son of mary the messenger of allah and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him but another was made to resemble him to them and indeed those who differ over it are in doubt about it they have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption and they did not kill him for certain we looked at surah 4 yeah. one, but the important thing to mention is that this week if you check the news the, um, the ring of Pontius Pilate was found by archaeologists. All oh, right. So we know Pontius Pilate exists. Yeah. And this is on the news. Today's date, um, if you read, is um, Sunday the 9th of uh, December yes. 2000, yes. 2018. Yes. So just check along this week. Yes. Pontius Pilate ring has yes. been found by archaeologists. Yes. So we know Pilate existed, yes. but we don't know Allah exists. Yes. We have no evidence of Allah, but we have evidence of Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Now, you made a mention about this death of Christ being the foundation. So this is why I'm going to read uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 21, and you guys can read the rest. Yeah. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because you know it, and you know no liars of the truth. That's right. No liars. Who is a liar but he that denieth Jesus as the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So we know by the lies of the Dawah, they don't have the Father, the Lord. But they call themselves slave, Abdullah, yeah. which is slave yeah. of Allah. Right. Yeah. So we're not slaves to our God, we're servants no, of our right. Lord. So this is why Islam lies, it is Antichrist. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. But this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. Amen. Right. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God have made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. To say on that, right. he's not just saying that he's the son, he's saying he's the son of the father. That's right. Very different to any other son mentioned in the Bible. Yes. Yes. It's God's son. son. Uniqueness. Thank you. That's right. And this verse is very important. Yes. The Dawah right. teams are calling That's God right. a liar. That's right. How can you Dawah teams be calling God a liar by denying the Son? This is a grave, grave sin. And this is how we know Allah is Satan. Because he is saying that he is not, that uh, believing in the Son of God is truth. And that means you're telling that God's testimony is a lie. You're saying you know more than God. 
Now, I'll go into this surah, and then you guys can go into the Second Thessalonians. According to Surah 70 to 73, when I tell you Muslims that Allah is sending you to hell, you will say, lying Christian again, again. <laughs> now, I'm not going to use my Bible. I'm going to use your Quran yes, to yes. tell you. Then surely it is we who are, and we is the, um, you know, the royal we of Allah, which is really Jibril yeah. Al, uh, Muhammad, mm. who are most knowing of those most trustworthy of burning therein. If you read this Sahir, it's talking about burning in hell. What Quran verses that are you uh, This is Quran 1970 to 73. Right. And there is none of you except he that will come into it. And he's talking about the hellfire. This is upon your Lord, which is Allah, and the inevitable decree. Then we will say, that is Allah saying, those feared of Allah, wrong do it. So Allah is saying, everybody's going to go to hell and then I'm going to bring them out. So yeah. this is why I say yeah. Muslims, you all go to so hell. Even the one that yeah. Allah has told you, he's, right. well remember, wow. he's the great deceiver yes. according so to your surah. No the one escapes Allah's deception. Wow. That's right, they're <laughs> not uh, in the old surah. If you're not confused already. So he's saying not even the ones worthy of paradise, you're still going to go no, there. No, you're all going to paradise, but they're going to go to hell for uh, wow. If you know the Islamic hell, how yeah. it works out, it's like a Takeshi, like a Japanese game show. You go one where fire's going, there's a bridge, and you got to step this way and there's drink on the side. You yeah. drink, you right. fall. But you're going to taste the hellfire and those that are, be purified. Yeah, and then come so out. Please tell me how hell from hellfire purifies you to be good. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> that's what I say. Wow. you got to be you're an idiot. you purified with the hellfire. Well, <laughs> well, that's what the Muslims are saying. And wow. then you get your Huris and the 73 yeah. virgins and the 80,000 slave boys yeah. that are naked. I don't know why you want children naked serving you. Wow. And you got three <laughs> revolving right. doors in that's, heaven. That's and Allah sends you a card every Saturday. Friday and you go and read the Psalms for the rest of your eternity and Muhammad is singing and you're there and this is the evil of Islam the wives of Muhammad in their Jannah are Mary so, um, yeah. wife of Joseph yeah. and a uh, uh, and, and, and uh, prophet Moses sister Mary mother Jesus. Mary, yeah. yeah Mary mother Jesus and Mary, those are the wives of Muhammad wow. uh, so to show you how That's disgusting insult, it's yeah. an insult, an insult. To, yeah uh, so please read second Thessalonians yeah, sure. chapter okay. 2 verses 10 to 12 and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved for this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be commended condemned sorry who have not believed the truth but have the delight in wickedness yes because you, you chose not to believe a perfect man like the Lord Saviour Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and you believe in, instead a man that beheaded 800 people, slept with underage girls, raped a woman after killing her husband and father right. and said, yeah, that's all good thing and he's the best of all mankind. Right. Well, you believed in wickedness, so you'll meet the eternal damnation. Because what we've realized is that Islam is trying to stop the gospel of yeah, salvation. Right. And we got to talk about salvation. Yeah. Salvation comes from the Lord. Yes. And I was, I'll read an order. I'll start with Psalm 61, yeah, sure. 62 verse 1. Yeah. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Who believes in and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that is believer, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Uh, and the Gentiles, that's what he meant yes, by the Greek. Yes, so it's right. all the whole world. In other words, it, does, it doesn't matter what yeah, race right. or creed that's or right. colour or exactly. whatever. For if, when we are enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay, so the death of his Son, which the Quran is going against, the death of our Lord. That's right. And this that's is why it's important. Yes. This is why Satan is trying to stop this. Yes gospel of salvation yes. by saying Jesus did yes. not die yeah. it's because he wants to send you to hell that's and that's is why we call Allah Satan we're yes. giving you the evidence verily verily I say unto you the hour is coming mm. and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear they shall, shall live for as the Father has life in himself so has he given to the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man Jesus can give judgment because he's God, he's the word of God. That's right. God is only that gives judgment. 
when you say that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, it's an allegory. It means that the authority of the Lord is through His Son, Jesus Christ. It does not mean that there's a throne next to the throne. There's not three. We believe in one God. Don't listen to the lies of the Dawah. They don't even know how to read English. They call Gentiles genitals. And how can you listen? That shows you where their mind is with the lust of the devil. Why are they trying to stop that message? Of the well, I think one of the reasons is that by the completion of God's of Christ's death and the way that things are prophesied in terms of the fulfillment that provides salvation, that completes that process, it completes the whole storyline. So then what happens is, how can then a prophet come along later on and then provide a different form of salvation? Because to do that, they have to somehow negate and uh, ruin, if you like, uh, the salvation message of the scriptures because the scriptures has already defined the salvation by Christ when he was on earth and when he died for us it's then complete salvation is assured our salvation is defined that also proves there is absolutely no need for a further prophet especially from a salvation okay point of view. no need for further yeah. prophet as I, as I said before again I said that Islam was purposefully um, um, came along for conflict and confusion it did and there's another twist because how did we arrive at the case where um, the Quran claims, the Quran does two things. It first of all comes on the scene and claims that it's going to confirm some previous scriptures. Oh yes. That's the first thing it does. Mm. But then when you, so that's a claim. And this is what I keep saying, the difference between a claim and evidence. So that claim is there. But then when we go through the material, we see the opposite happening. We see everything being turned on its head. As I said before, yes, in, all, in all of the it's key us. points. So this is not an accident. In all of the key points, the gospel is clearly denied. Jesus is denied of being crucified. Jesus wasn't crucified. The Quran says the essence of salvation. The know, essence the of essence salvation. Of salvation. Yeah. Jesus yeah. wasn't crucified. It's quite clear about that. It's clear, and it, it, it's not only so. So there's a line that statement within itself, yeah. but it's turning the light on its head. It's saying that though, quite simply, what it's saying is that those who are witnesses don't know what they're talking about. So in other words, the apostles don't know what it is. What he's saying, oh, they don't yeah. know what they're talking about. It's only conjuncture. So the apostles who were there, check this, didn't know what they were talking about. Who is this coming from? Now we know they say it was Allah. We, we, we can say it was Allah. Allah is lying. But more, more importantly, more historically, it's coming from people that were 600 years late. Oh, 600. 600 years. How can anyone but take this seriously? They say 600 years later, yes. but when you look, it's more than that. Yeah, of course. Because we don't even know yeah, when the, uh, yes, the actual script... No, just by the standard though, yeah, of course. Of course by the standard. Yeah, so. 600 years later. So this is the key. So it's making so, so in that statement, it turned... And this is what I mean by turning everything on its head. It's come along and made a bold statement saying that the apostles didn't know what they're talking about. Those who were there didn't know what they were talking about. They're already conjuncturing. You know, and it's made him emphatically. He well, did not die. They did not kill him yeah. for certain. Yes. And one of the other issues, yes. of course, is they're saying that um, uh, Muhammad was the, the final prophet. So what they're really saying is that they are supporting the prior prophets. All the prophets that are mentioned in the scripture, they're supporting them. And they're saying that the final prophet is also, you know, under the same banner of those prophets. Yes. So to do that, there's got to be some kind of line of narration that is consistently flows from the prophets that we know in terms of the message, yes. in terms of their purpose. But the funny thing is, is that when you look at the look at the Quran, you look at the way it describes and re records messages yeah. relating to the prior prophets, it's not what's in scripture. It's something very different. And therefore it's like a very different message. It's not it's in totally line. different to totally be honest. Different. Let's, 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 even all the accounts yeah. of every prophet is totally yeah. different. So the funny thing is if Suleiman has a flying carpet. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but right. that's one of the that's ones that really yeah, Suleiman has a flying carpet and yeah. he built the temple of um, Ju in Jerusalem with a, yeah. a magic ring with jinns. But in our Bible it shows two hundred and seventy thousand yeah. workers built that temple, which makes more sense than magical smokeless Absolutely. genies in a bottle. But not only that, key yeah. as well is the words of Jesus. You know, this does not this is clearly not Jesus in the Quran. No. Yeah. The words, that's not Jesus. The whole yeah. character is not Jesus. Yeah. The way they've got Jesus relating to Allah. And Jesus yeah. spoke about false Jesus. Yeah. 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 And so, when you look at when yeah. you look at all these different uh, prophets, yeah. Yeah, you mean if we had to go with what Muhammad is saying. What we really is saying is there's a massive claim, as like you said earlier, yeah. it's going directly against God because it's going against his scripture, against his word, which means all those thousands of years of all the progression through the Israelites, all that detailed historical factual years. evidence yeah. is literally saying it's all rubbish. We're what? not going to believe it, yet we've got such fantastic evidence and then believe it on the premise of something we have far less evidence. Yes, and, then they, and this is the key. 
Muhammad came in the name of another God. God yes. Right there is the reason why he's not a prophet. Yeah. And in Exodus 3.15, God clearly gave his name. God's personal name is Yahweh. Yes. Not only did he say that with the personal name, he said this is my name forever. Yeah, so that's where Islam Lord. falls and immediately. He came in the name the of Yahweh, another God. Yes, not that's in right. The yes. He not came in, not once. Not and once. he sings over 6,000 times yeah. in, the, in, in, and, in the Bible. And reiterate your point saying yeah. that this is my name until yes, time forever more, yeah forever. this is my name and, and, and it gets yes. even more interesting when we say well what the name is Allah but actually the na Allah is not a name no, he's a Allah is a is actually just simply a description of the Arabic name for God mm. um, yeah. no I, I disagree with you oh, there, okay. because Al is the God meaning La is the name of the God that's why you got Alat, Al Uzza. Isn't it okay. just yeah. saying the God? Okay. No, no. Well, this is why we need people with uh, with ancient um, right. Arabic teachings. But certainly, it's but not, the, not the original. But the name no, of the, no, absolutely the, not. No, no that's the, point. the name yeah. of the God, La. Oh, I, I used to read hieroglyphics. This yeah. is. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you pictures of yeah, where sure. I, yeah. I I read okay. the, um, yeah, sure. some of the yeah. old scriptures sure. of the Egyptians. Okay. Yeah. The God of the Egyptians, the Moon God, was called La. Okay. Yeah. I can confirm that okay. from reading. Okay. So this is why I said that. Okay, when I was talking yes. with the Muslims, you got to read yes. all the ancient history. Yes. That's yes. why I wanted yeah. to talk with your yes. DCCI yeah. team. But and I was showing you that the Sabian religion, that's the God they worship. Mm. And that's why they have the same right. Shahada mm. as the Muslims. Okay. But yeah. you guys but said I Nabateans be, yeah, and I didn't fine. want to get involved. I want to be involved. clear on this though, that is not the God of the Bible. Oh no, no, no. So what I'm saying is from the start, Muhammad got it wrong. You know, so, mm. so let, let's conclude. Even if he was a nice guy and he didn't do all those horrendous things that he did, yeah. he still does not qualify for a prophet. Oh, no. And this is the point. It's not about mentioning the bad thing that he did. If he hadn't done any of those things, if he'd have kept the golden rule, you mean, if he had been a believer in Jesus Christ, doesn't qualify for a prophet. You mean, you cannot fit into an area where you don't know. All of the prophets came within the banner of Israel. There are no prophets. All the prophets were Hebrew, Israelites. All of them. And Israelites. Say, yeah, it, and yeah, you know the yeah, funny thing? Yes. The Quran says the line of the prophets yes. are from the Israelites. Yes, that's right. I'm going to get that's the right. Quranic so, so verse indeed. and yes. I'll give it to that's JC, right. yeah. um, which is important. Yeah. And that Quranic verse will show what the yes. Quran says, yes. all the line of the prophets from the Israelites. You're yes. going to and say I was something. just going to say a very important point that we should always keep, keep in mind, is that all the prophets point to a fulfillment of those prophecies to Jesus Christ, yes. being the fulfillment of those prophecies. So if Muhammad was going to be a true prophet in line with all those prophets, he should have come before Jesus. The yes. fact he came so many years after, That's after Jesus clearly <laughs> means he's come too late. The yes. order's wrong. The order's the, wrong. The order's the shop wrong. Is closed. Yes. Because the Messiah <laughs> fulfilled the law yeah. and everything else. Right. Absolutely. I, I had a big calling. This is actually the last of my series. I'm going to support Brother Hudson on his uh, series and I hope that Brother Ray comes in because sure, this was I'm impromptu to, and yeah. uh, no, I, I'm happy that someone from DCCI... This is the invitation, the invitation is the same. Yes. Thank you brother, <laughs> uh, we all do this in the glory. I give all glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not of my own doing. I, 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 I praise the Lord for bringing my brothers to help support. I thank Soko Films brother JC that's freezing and still standing with us in this yeah. bad cold ensuring that this message comes out I thank the members of the audience that have always been uh, very uh, blessing us giving us strength I felt those blessings yes. the Absolutely. critics I thank you because yes. you make us address all and actually put more right. effort yes. we all do yes. now this is my calling that why I've left my church to come and do this mm. they go on sermon each week but I stay behind in mm. order to do something mm. I'm calling on disciples yes. I'm calling on evangelists, yes. cyber warriors, to carry the flag for our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you cannot come out and preach on the street like I do sometimes, or you, you can't come here to Speaker's Corner, go online. I would ask you to take Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 15. Go on all the Daniel, Dawa channels yes. and put these up. Yes. Copy and paste, yes, let's right. do this. Yes. Let's go, if yes, 300 right. of you 300 of you go along on all these Dawah channels, all these fake Muslim sites and put these um, the gospel of salvation. We are going to win a soul or more and they'll be rejoicing in heaven and the glory goes to the right. Lord. Even if it doesn't stay, once it's up there one time and somebody sees it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Luke chapter 10 verse 2, he told them the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into the field. Yes. If you call yourself a born-again Christian, then it's time for you to work for your Lord and help with the harvest in whatever capacity you can. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not your God. I'm just a humble servant of the Lord. But I can't do this on my own. My brothers here can't. We in Speaker's Corner can't. We need as many of you. 
Online is the way because a many a, a larger audience can be reached. But foot soldiers too. Yes, yeah. all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you to take up this. If those of you that are willing to be disciples yeah. online, please comment in the comment section. Yeah. If one of you, yes. only one, right. I will give play, blessing right. and praise to the Lord. Right. I will know that all this effort has yeah. been for something. Just to, to conclude, is one of the things here is that we have a very much uh, dominant uh, Muslim presence. Um, which is one of the challenges we have. We're very outnumbered. Um, but you can see a lot of people, even they may be Muslim or whatever, mm -hmm. that they've got, uh, for a lot of innocent ones, if you like, I've got a real search for truth. They've got, they're trying to find answers. And all they're getting is getting impressed by the, uh, yes. the rhetoric of, of the Muslim faith and the deception and the lies. But because it's done in as, a, as a show, it's, it's, it's having a compelling effect. We need to counteract that with the truth. Yes. We need to get that message out there. But the struggle we got is we're outnumbered. We need more yeah, like it. Right. And we do ask you to just, you know, look at your hearts and, and understand that, you know, we're all Christians. And as a Christian, it is a commission that we should be spreading the world. We're not looking for evangelists in the sense of, you know, a gifting where that's your calling. We're talking yeah, about right. simply people that as a Christian, you want to give that message it means take, taking some of your time to share that gospel and we're inviting you here where there's a real need yeah. not only to help with, with the situation but the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of viewers that are videoed and watched on a, a, during this speaker's corner so the the audience is huge so that you know this is how you can get a message to hundreds of thousands of people very very successfully it just requires a bit of time a bit of sacrifice of your time if you feel you can do that we really recommend it because we can see the massive value that god will support and doing please this. please yes. pray sorry i yes. forgot to mention mm. i give thanks to christian prince channel mm. he's doing mm. so mm. much to help yeah. our yeah. polemics uh, and we really need to address this yeah. we ask you guys buy his books yeah. if you read one of his books deception of allah you will just know islam is totally yeah. crazy yeah. Uh, he has so many good books yeah. and his show if you want to be a, uh, an apologist yeah. in Speaker's Corner, get some study from him. He will help you. I've taken a lot of content from him and it's, been, it's proved effective. Don't waste your time getting into intricacies. Let the professionals like DCCI that have a scholarly team behind them do that. Allah is Satan. Keep the soundbite That's simple. Right. Yeah. Go Satan. and I'd like you, Brother Hudson, <laughs> to do the uh, remaining yeah, sure. acts. Yeah. Right, sure. I would firstly like to um, thank um, the audience for their comments. We've seen them, we've run them, they're encouraging, and we've also encouraged. So it, it's been shared. We've been encouraged and we've encouraged, as you can clearly see by the comments. Um, I would like to um, reiterate Roy's, um, Ray's point. Um, we need workers. Um, people that can pray, people that can support, people can that donate. But I would say, really, you know, which is what gets to my heart, foot soldiers, you know, if you can. That can be as individuals, can be individuals from a particular Christian church congregation. Unity, yeah, unity, it, it can be, unity yeah, of the church. Yeah, you know, you all know, you Christians know, yeah, together. Yeah, you know, we've got no, them, you know, yeah, we've got evangelists in churches who do evangelism work. It can be from the highest level as well. It can be trained apologists, you know, it yeah. can be um, theologians, it can be a pastor, it can be a bishop, but it can just be the everyday witness. You know, you have the love of God in your heart, you know what it means to be born again, the Lord has saved you, you have an experience, and you want to come and put that into practice. Simply because that's what we mean by evangelism. Just telling somebody about, that's what a witness is. Yeah. Just telling, without um, academic training, just telling somebody about Jesus. Absolutely. And how do you tell them about him? By what you've experienced. Nobody can't beat that. Nobody can beat your experience. What yes. Jesus has done for me, you can do for you. That's yes. a testimony. Yes. So you can get down in different areas I'm trying to encourage. You know, we need workers, you know, foot soldiers, either in teams of evangelists in churches, Absolutely. or with your pastor, from top apologists you know, to theologians to just the everyday normal folk to come and join us in unity because what we're seeing now yeah. which has been effective as well is that christians are taking the message you know they, they, they're bringing it as it yeah. were to the muslims you mean yeah. in groups sometimes you can do that in, 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 numbers, in, in, in numbers there is safety yeah. There is safety yes. in numbers. Yeah. Safety and just, seen on and just a small yes, thing as well, as a yeah. special kind of yeah. call out, yes. is that if you are uh, Arabic and you can oh, know yes. the language. Oh yes, yes, thank you very much, um, brother. We are in a real need for anyone yeah. that can translate and understand yeah. An Arab Arabic. speaking yeah. Christian or that an word. Arab speaker yes. of the community yeah. that yeah. really feels, yeah, yes, let me read yes. this Quran in Please this Arabic and, uh, and, and counter the Wouldn't that the be dawah. good if we could have them here in Israel? We could call them at the time. We ask the audience, we believe in our God and we ask you to pray that all the yes, tools yes. we need to ensure that the message and gospel of salvation yes. comes to the greater world yes. 
comes to us yes because your blessings I felt them in my life yes. and this is why I'm very happy to do this video and I also like to always mention Soko films mm. and the brilliant work he's doing yeah. behind mm. the scenes mm. Mm. because yeah. without it the audience wouldn't be reached no, DCCI not. there are other not. ministries here yes. they've done very important work the sisters in this yes, audience yes, yes. from Hatun, yes. the lioness as yes. she's called online, yes. and Sister Betty, Sister Whose Marie. Voice you can hear right around oh, yes. constantly preaching. Constantly preaching. Yes. yes, there are many sisters. It's not only us. Yes. Um, Brother Ray is one that I'm, I'm really thankful for you, Ray, to, to join us in, to, in this uh, sermon. I, I really thank you, Brother Hudson, as well. And I have to thank shake you your too. hand because you, you came out of your ministry. Mm -hmm and you supported me on my mission mm. now it's my time to Thank support you. you on your mission yes. Yes. and you know yes. helping that we're going to totally nullify mm. the yeah. polemics of islam and that and to understand how it works here I, in the park I what they do without, you know, how, yeah. and i know brother yes. ray will assist us on this mission yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely yes. so this is how the right. body of christ works together yes unity of the church please no divisions i'm not no. I, I am totally against this um div breaking of I don't have a denomination mm. sorry I, I'm passionate about this mm. but I believe as Christians we should be together as I love my other Christian brothers I love my Muslim brothers I have no hatred your religion is sending you to damnation and I want you to wake up yeah. so we will try in every way to ensure yeah. that you listen to our message by showing you your scripture yeah. JC yeah. in Soka films is doing the best to bring it to you in a brilliant way that it, you can understand our narrative and the rest is for yes. you to decide yes. and we can only pray on your yes. behalf and you Christians pray on their behalf yes. and so make it clear again yeah. that it's Islam which is an ideology not Muslims yes. not yeah. Muslims. Islam is an ideology yeah, exactly. and Muslims are its victims yes. Yes. so the target is Islam yeah. we've forgotten something yeah. What's that? we have to give the glory to our Lord Jesus Christ yeah. anyone that is touched by the sermon anyone that has learnt something it is not our ability mm. it's our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ who is at the right hand of the Father and when they say the right hand he is not on a throne at the right hand mm. it's an allegory meaning the position of power of the Lord yes. it is only through the Son you can meet the Father mm. and we give all glory to our Lord Jesus Christ mm. to enable us to do our missions mm. and to con keep consistent yes. and to challenge the lies and hypocrisy and contradiction yes. of the uh, Dawa narrative yeah. And finally, just let me say, ask the audience to pray for us where and when they can. In oh, please pray. Yes. Sitting in front of your screen, in your yeah. church, with other team members, prayer warriors that are out there, you know, really put us to prayer. And please get your prayer chains to call mm. for the videos from Christian Prince and so called mm. to go viral, mm. because more Muslims need to see this. Mm. If any of these important videos goes viral, mm. it is essential. Pray for the Arabic speakers. Mm. I'd like you, Brother Ray, to put some other input because yeah. you also give a different dimension to our rhetoric. Sure. So, you know, it's um, it's just a big thing that from a Christian point of view, we've got to be looking at how we can participate. And when, when we look down, uh, you know, your local areas, there isn't really much opportunity. This is a huge opportunity. This has turned out to be a real corner of, of interest of people that want answers to faith. If you want to really help in bringing people to Christ, if you want to have an opportunity that you really can make a difference, you, you've got to come here, you've got to at least experience it. I mean, you don't have to be a scholar, you can come at different levels. We will support you. Um, it, it is a, a, a bit of a challenge, but it's worth it because once you've got, I mean, you have definitely felt of God's faith, uh, spirit working and supporting us, it's just made it so much doable, it's manageable, and the rewarding is, is amazing. When you see the difference it has, the effect it has, and the, and the silent numbers, I mean, as I say, there are, I saw once 2.4 million people watching videos of one a particular week. That's the huge audience. So this is what, how amazing, how much of a difference you can make if you can participate. So we really thank you for anyone that can, you know, join this in any way, shape or form. We would appreciate it. Amen. Amen to that. So thank you. God bless thank you all. Yeah, and have a lovely Christmas if you don't see us before then.